Then, with a game-changing shift in the war against ISIS, as the White House says it will put boots on the ground in Syria for the first time, the U.S. will deploy up to 50 U.S. commandos and the special forces to back rebel groups as they prepare to retake the territory. Meanwhile, crucial talks on Syria are underway in Vienna as Secretary of State John Kerry sits down with the major players backing the war, including Russia. Earlier, Kerry explained why he's more optimistic about these talks. But I believe the diplomatic situation is today more promising than it has been in some time because all of the stakeholders came to this table. But NATO's Supreme Commander is sounding the alarm on Russia. Russia's continued aggressive actions and malign influence remain a top concern and a very high priority. We cannot fully be certain of what Russia will do next, and we still cannot fully discern Mr. Putin's intent. Right now, I do not see them as a partner. I am joined right now by Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters, a Fox News military analyst. First, 50 special forces. This will include some aircraft as they're going to be operating out of our base uh, in southern Turkey. Should we just send them a fruit basket instead? This doesn't seem to me to be much of an offering to help uh, the rebels in Syria. Now, Cheryl, that's, that's, you've nailed it. This is not a major shift in policy. This is more incrementalism. As President Obama strives to do the absolute minimum he can to shore up a catastrophically failing policy. And these 50 men on the ground, they'll, they'll make a local difference. It, it all helps a little bit, but it's not going to be strategically decisive. And oh, by the way, when you send in our special operators, you don't tell people. It's supposed to be a secret. When you're announcing you're sp sending up the 50 special forces into eastern Syria, that's like, like an invitation to Islamic State to kidnap those guys or kill them. It's, it's just absolutely not how you do it. It's preposterous and weak and a sign of this president's overall inability to deal with reality. Okay, so does this really, this isn't to really benefit the Syrian rebels whatsoever. Does, I'm not sure that this is going to help Assad in any way, but, but is the, are we actually helping the Russians and the Iranians by making this, this tiny gesture, this meaningless gesture, not, and no offense to our troops. Of course, our, the men in our yeah. military are amazing and they will do a, a incredible work, but their hands are going to be just as tight as anyone. So are we helping the Russians and the Iranians here? Yeah, that's a key question. And you've done your homework on this. Um, although, obviously, we want to destroy Islamic State, uh, President Obama and Secretary Kerry have allowed us to be maneuvered into such an, a, a disastrous position that there's a de facto division of labor in Syria enforced by Iran and Russia. Whereas we fight Islamic State for them, and they go after our guys and the other more moderate rebels for the Assad government. So every time we do succeed against Islamic State at this point, we're helping, yes, we're helping the Kurds, but we are primarily propping up the Assad regime and making it, and rendering, um, it's, it's making it so that Iran and Russia don't have to do it. We're doing their dirty work for them. Right. It's just strategically incomprehensible. Sure. I, I don't have a lot of time left with you, but two quick, two quick questions. First, Iran coming to the table in Vienna. Good idea, bad idea? Bad idea. Uh, once again, we're, we're promoting Iran. Iran has gone, thanks to Secretary Kerry and President Obama, from pariah state deeply in debt and troubled, that was killing Americans in Iraq, to now being welcome as our equal partner at the Viennese talks. Oh, by the way, of all the platitudes espoused by this administration, the worst is there's no military solution to the Islamic State problem with Syria. Mm -hmm. There is only a military solution, and Iran and Russia are imposing Colonel it. Colonel Peters, I'm just now, just now being told that we've just received a, a statement from General, uh, from General Petraeus saying that he believes that this is a positive move. General Petraeus saying that this is a positive move. Move. Well, it is a positive. Syria. It is a positive move in a very small way. This is, you know, this is basically. It's not dealing with nationwide crime. It's dealing with the crime in Des Moines. Uh, it's it's not part of a comprehensive vision. There's no real strategy here. So yes, it will help out locally. Right. It will not be decisive. <laughs> it's another incremental step that will ultimately. Fail. Well, and, and also, too, we should, I just want to point out to our viewers, the other big headline happening today is the fact that they've detained an Iranian-American yeah. businessman. Um, he's got dual citizenship. He's based out of Dubai. And his family has not heard from him. And, and the, this is the Iranians, once again, kind of thumbing their nose yeah. up yeah, in sure. America, frankly. Yeah, just quickly, yeah, quickly I mean, you know, we, 
we uh, we should always send our military in as an absolute last resort. Right. But when you send them in, you got to pile on and fight to win. The cardinal advantage of being a superpower is mm -hmm. super power and you save lives in the long run right. by doing it right in the first place. Uh, uh, Colonel Ralph Peters, thank you so much, Senator Colonel Ralph Peters, for being for being thank here. You. A lot of breaking